Now, where exactly in that region of real images? This is you want it the same size as the actual bunch. So where can we put the object to get something? Let's write that to f. Okay. Now we're done. But that doesn't say um, they want it to look right side up. Ah, yeah, that's right. Let's actually deal with that later. Okay. That turns out uh, we're not we're not quite interpreting that right. But anyway, based on the other points. We, um, in fact, we didn't even have to focus on the, the, um, the fact that he wanted it. Well, yeah, I guess we should. So oh, wait, it's, it's not, it's, it's, it's flipped, but it's not upside down. Yeah, I think you figured it out. Yeah, that's right. I think you figured that out. We'll go through that step by step. Because if you draw the, so if you draw the little... Inverted doesn't mean upside down. Oh. Inverted just means that the image is oriented opposite to the object. Inverted just means the image is oriented oh, object, so opposite to the object. So if the object was already upside down, then the image, if it's inverted, would be right side up. Can you do it like? We should probably do a bunch of examples of that. OK. But let's stick with what we have here so far. Um, as soon as they told us it's real and the same size as the actual bunch, yeah, um, the object should be, uh, should be where? F, 2F. 2F. Good. We still haven't quite answered part A then. So, if you use a concave mirror, at what distance you place the actual flowers with respect to the mirror? So add 2F. But they want a number. At, at 40 centimeters? Yeah, how do you know that that's 2F? So they get the radius. Yeah. So we know this equation over here. By the way, I should remind you, because there's a trap on this later in the sample exam, this only tells you the magnitudes. This only tells you the magnitudes. Remember, it's your job to figure out the sign of the focal length. Because we know converging devices have positive focal lengths and diverging have negative. So I'll put in the dots like I like to do to show that this just shows you the magnitudes. But that's all we uh, maybe hear about here for a second. All right, so they told us the radius was 40 centimeters. So the focal length um, would be 20 centimeters. So where, where again should we put the flowers? At 40 centimeters? Yeah, we actually should put them at the radius because yeah. that's 2F. 2F here would be the 40 centimeters. Okay, um, that's good. Now, however, I don't know if you can get full credit for this, because I don't know if you can get full credit for saying, oh, it says that in my chart, yeah. right? So this is a good check, but we should actually see how to prove this by algebra. Okay, so let's go through, uh, but at least we know what the answer is supposed to be ahead of time. So now let's try to go through the algebra. So we want to use the lens mirror equation here. So let's try to use uh, the lens mirror equation. That might not be that easy, so let's go through that. Try to get that same answer. Uh, okay, well, give that a shot. So you do one over f equals one over s plus one over s prime. Right, s for the object distance, s prime for the image distance. Good. So just plug in, start plugging in things that I. Now, know. what can we plug in here? So we know that f is um, positive 40 centimeters. Can you tell me where did you get that from? Oh no, it's positive 20. Right. R is 40. Yeah. So we figured out F was 20. And now you did something that was very good. You included the sign. It's very important to include the sign. How did you know it would be positive? Because it's converging. Yeah, we know that converging devices always have positive focal lengths. I'm not sure going to build that into our table here. Converging devices always have positive focal lengths. Actually, that's an idea I had since the last time we met. In your chart, you might as well put in Converging means positive focal length, and diverging means negative focal length. Okay, so that's good to put that in. It's always good to show the sign even on something that's positive. All right, anything else we can plug in? So that's what we're trying to find. So yeah, so it's always good to put in a question mark for what you're trying to find. So this is a question mark, but then can we put anything for S prime? I don't know if we had a chance to even talk about this yet. Do you remember, what does the uh, magnification equation, what is the oh, magnification the equation? Of S, S prime over um, S. Good. So, oh, so if they want it to be the same size, so um, S equals S prime, or negative. Yeah, now let's put this in magnitudes. Again, I'll use the dots to indicate magnitudes. So in magnitudes, this just means that the magnitude of magnification equals the magnitude of S prime over the magnitude of S, using the dots. What do we want the magnitude of the magnification to be here? So what's the relationship between the magnitude 
of s and the magnitude of s prime. Oh, so it's the same. They're the same in magnitude. And now we just have to figure out um, what the sign is going to be on s prime. Well, um, so we know they're going to have the same magnitude. Real image, so s prime should be positive. Very good. That's right. So as usual, we've seen many times in the course, it's better usually not to try to use formulas to get the signs. We just get confused when we try to use yeah. formulas to get the signs. Just use the formula to get the magnitude, and then we can use our common sense or other knowledge to get the signs. So what should we plug in for S prime down here? Um, S. Yeah, just S. We don't have to put in negative S because it's the same sign as S. We just figured out that S prime, uh, not only uh, do they have the same magnitude, but they have the same sign. So we can just plug in the same uh, variable over here. I'm even going to put that in our chart here. We know that real images have positive image distances, and virtual images have negative image distances. So I put that in the chart here, too. It looks like you're already familiar with that, so that's good. Okay, that was a big help. All right, so then what? So now we have 1 over 20 equals S2 over S. we predicted? Yeah. yeah. And the nice thing here is if you had made an algebra mistake, you'd be able to catch it here at this point. All right. But um, so it's still good to use the chart, but um, you might, you, you can check this with your TA, but I don't think you'd get full credit by just pointing to the chart. So you need to know how to do this algebraically as well. Okay. Um, so that gives us uh, that. Okay. So there's a couple of things here we haven't had time to talk about before. One thing is when we went over the chart before, we never talked about what happens at the border regions. Yeah. So now we can add that. Now, in a sense, if we, if we use enough Spock-like logic, we can figure out what happens at the border regions. This is the border between shrunk and magnified, which means it's the same size. The image at 2f is the same size as the object for a converging device. And then we also briefly talked about this is the border between real and virtual, but you couldn't be neither real nor virtual or the upright or inverted. So there's really no image here, which means the image distance would be infinity at this point. OK. Um, so we talked about how to interpret that. And then the other thing is, um, last time when we talked about the magnification equation, we didn't quite say, what does it mean if something is magnified? You can see now, things get magnified when the image is further away than the object. Yeah. Again, this is clearer if we just focus on the magnitudes and don't worry about the sign over here. Things are magnified when the image is further than the object. Things are magnified when the image is further than the object. And things are shrunk when the image is closer than the object. So if they tell you that something is, um, if an image is the same size as the object, you know that the image must be at the same distance as the object. That's what we ended up with, right? Um, we know that the object was at 40 centimeters, and the, uh, oh, well, we didn't actually figure that out, but the image would also be here at 40 centimeters. Yeah. Okay. All right, so there was some stuff here we hadn't had a chance to talk about before, so that's good to uh, have there. Uh, real image. Real image. Okay. P greater than... So he means P as, as S? It's a real image. Oh, actually, he's kind of using the chart here. He says it's a real image. No, no yeah. So he, um, he never did this in class. So in the, in the exam, he uses P for S. He uses P for the object distance. He never did that in class? Maybe this year. He... Yeah. I guess he uses P for the position of the object. Oh, yeah. So in, in, the, in the exam, he uses P for S. He uses P for the object distance. I for S prime. Oh, and he's using I for S prime, too. Yeah. Okay, so you should know that convention that he's using there. Okay, so anyway, that's just what we already said. Yeah, and so he's kind of using the chart. He's just got memorized that real images are always past the focal point for a converging device. Uh, respect to the mirror in front of the mirror, which, right. which we get from our chart, or do we get that from algebra too? What was that? That it's in front of the mirror. Oh, well, it's real. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which side is the outgoing light going to be on? Oh, the, the left or the right? On the left. Um, so if it's a real image, where does the image have to be? The, it has to be on the same side. Which is to be the left. Yeah. Remember, that was our definition of a real image. A real image is on the same side as the outgoing light. Okay. Um, well, shall we just go on to part B? Yeah. Okay.